settle into the space. Follow your breath. It's very likely that after this hour of work, your breath is deeper and moves more fluidly around your body. It's like ice on thawing, how it swirls. Can you feel it? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and we are going to be looking at the Emerald Tablet, Tablet 12, and Tablet 13 today. These two tablets are shorter than the other tablets, the previous tablets before this. So I figured we just go ahead and do both of these tablets on the same day. Now, what I am going to do is for this episode, I am going to strictly be reading from Thoth, from the actual tablets for both of them. And then over on Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, We'll go through, again, the tablets and then also look at Doriel's commentary. The reason why I'm not going to do this for these two on my channel is the commentary isn't even that big from Doriel. And so I figured that for this reading, we'll just go through what Thoth says and we'll discuss it from that perspective. And then we'll save Doriel's perspective for Aquarius Rising Africa, of course, as many of you know. The episode with Aquarius Rising Africa, which is at 10 a.m. Eastern time, is going to be a lot. It's always a live show. And so you can participate as well. As most of you know, again, I'm just going to reiterate, I typically drop my videos at 10 o'clock Eastern time on my channel for my morning videos. But with the Emerald Tablets, I am dropping them at 8 o'clock in the morning just to give you guys some time to hear the commentary before joining us over for the discussion on Aquarius Rising Africa. These Emerald Tablets are unbelievable. And there's we could probably read these tablets 20 more times and get even more information each time we read them, which is true for most spiritual books. So with that being said, as always, I would highly suggest that you get your own copy. Of course, I am doing Doriel's copy. That is one of the most, um, most widely used commentaries and copies and translations of the Emerald Tablets, but there's many, many great commentaries out there. Don't limit yourself. If you would like to read all the commentaries out there, go ahead have at it it's amazing to see everybody else's perspectives um however on a youtube channel or a show we don't have that kind of time and so that's why i picked Doriel strictly because it's the most commonly used and so don't let that limit you though if you are on a budget and don't want to have to purchase the emerald tablets if you just go to your google bar and you type it in like emerald tablet 12 pdf typically a pdf will, will pop up for you for free to be able to print it and have it for yourself only problem is there is no commentary. So, um, so, but, but you don't really need commentary if you trust your own intuition anyway. So, so I like reading all the commentaries and taking my own perspective too, because multiple perspectives are always better than one. If you are interested in purchasing, purchasing the commentary that I am using, I'm going to be putting the link in the description box below to my affiliate link on Amazon under the uh category books used on the show and so i have a lot of the, a plethora here it is right here of books that have been used on the show this is the copy i'm using i also have rebecca marina's uh third tablet well i looked at her commentary when we did the third tablet as well she has great commentaries too so that's here as well for another option all right with that being said let's get started with emerald tablet 12 the law of cause and effect and the key of prophecy. List ye, O man, to the words of my wisdom. List to the voice of Thoth, the Atlantean. Conquered have I the law of time and space. Conquered have I gained of the future and time. Know I that man in his movement through space time shall ever be one with the all. So this is again reiterating like the last three tablets where and we've said this before we've said this on Aquarius Rising Africa I've said this the hardest thing for us to really wrap our heads around in third density is the concept of time because in our world through our perspective time is linear but it's really not linear and a good example of this if that's confusing to you is to think about the um the famous phrases time flies when you're having fun or time slows down when you're really bored and having a horrible time, right? So the perception of time, just thinking about that in that perspective might help you understand how time really isn't linear. We also see this discussed heavily in the Sophia Code, which we've covered on my channel, as well as what we're doing on Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa on Wednesdays. Um, they talk about that as well. And speaking of time, 
right now in Atlanta, Georgia, they are doing construction across or really right next door, like less than 10 feet from my window. So if you do hear banging around, I apologize. That is the construction. So anyway, so basically with this first verse, uh, Thoth is saying that he's conquered this, this, um, this idea of time. So he's able to move forwards and backwards throughout the time space continuum because he now has an understanding of what time really is. Verse two, know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read. All effects shall bring forth its causes and all effects grew from the first cause. That's karma. Karma is cause and effect. And again, if you know, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know, all karma is, is your work. It's not bad or good. It's just your work. It's cause and effect. Yeah. Know ye the future is not fixed or stable, but varies as cause brings forth an effect. And I apologize. My dog is barking. If you can hear that. Look in the cause thou shalt bring into being and surely thou shalt see that all is effect. So that's interesting. He's saying that the future is not fixed. It's not fixed because of cause and effect, right? So let's look at the law of one again, for example. You know, we talk heavily about the Cassiopeians on this channel. And if you're new here, I will place one of the episodes I just recently done with Cap uh, Catherine Edwards, where we read from the Cassiopeian board, um, where they basically give us vague information because they can't tell us the answers because they cannot they cannot interfere with our free will because if they interfere with our free will then it changes the trajectory of where we need to go we have to decide where to go if we keep falling for the fake news on msm or if we keep falling for the fake news on youtube from the infiltrator truthers then we're going to go into a new world order right if we actually take our sovereignty back and we start as thought has told us over and over and over again in this tablets to work on ourselves, to really own our own individual power as a collective, then we go on a different trajectory, right? It's cause and effect. So if you work on yourself and you do your shadow work and you are constantly trying to better yourself to be of service to others, then you are shifting the future. But if you keep waiting for someone to come save you, if you keep waiting for these magical white hats to come in and save you or waiting for a med bed or waiting for a Nasara, then you're handing your power over to an outside force, which is a form of enslavement. It also creates a pecking order. And according to the law of one, that's fourth density negative. So your choices are the cause that are the uh, cause that creates the effect. Yeah. And so that is why it's so important to really work on yourself, as he has said in every single tablet. All right, so let's keep going. In the great beginning, there grew the first cause that brought into beings all that exist. Thou thyself art the effect of causation and in turn are the cause of yet other effects. Right. So at first there was the creation of matter, of, of being, of, of um. The body, the planet, the animals, that is the Shakti, the expression of the soul, as we say in yoga, the Prakriti and the Purusha. And the body, as we've said many times, the body being the Shakti is the cause of what effect you want to have. So whatever, so let's say when your soul, before your soul took this incarnation, let's use something I, I typically like to use really simple ex um, examples, so not more you know, more complex shadow work, you'll need to work with a healer and a teacher. But let's just look at something kind of simple that a lot of people struggle with, which is overeating. So let's say that you in this life struggle with overeating, you've had a weight issue. So your soul picked a body picked a propensity through inherited karma through your parents or whatever, to have the propensity to overeat instead of, of actually dealing with emotions because there's a friction there that you'll, your soul needed to learn. And so the answer to that isn't giving in to that temptation, but working on it. Like, why do I do this? Why do I do that? I have the opposite problem. I tend to stop eating. I tend to not eat when I'm super stressed out. So that's an issue I have to work on in this life. And it's something that my soul picked. So you are what your soul created. You are the cause and the effect of whatever karma your soul wanted to work through in this life for its own refinement. So any type of resistance you have in your in your world, so any type of shadow work that you have is actually something your soul picked in order for it to refine itself. And the one thing that's going to ensure 
that you don't move forward in your evolution is if you ignore those issues or you wait for somebody else to fix it for you because you are the power that creates that effect, that cause and effect. And so therefore, you are the one that is privileged enough with the opportunity to live this experience and work through this experience. I hope that makes sense. If that's confusing to you, I would say simply just start off reading like the yoga sutras or work with a healer. And over time, that will start to make more sense. All right, let's see here. So, oh man, be sure the effects that you bring forth are ever causes for more perfect effects. Again, you control your outcome. You're the one that has to save yourself. You can either choose to take your power back and go on a positive timeline or you have the choice to surrender your power to someone else outside of you and go into a negative timeline. The choice is yours. And the law of one, frankly, doesn't care which other uh, ever way you go. because It's all going to lead back to the same one anyway. It's just what do you want? Do you want to be enslaved or do you want to be free? It's your choice. It's only your choice, though. Nobody can nobody can ascend for you. Nobody can heal for you. You have to make that choice. So let's read that again. So, oh, man, be sure the effects that you bring forth are ever causes of more perfect effects. Know ye the future is never in fixation, but follows man's free will as it moves through the moments of time space towards the goal where new time begins. Man can only read the future through the causes that bring the effects. Seek ye within the causation and surely you will find the effects. So you can prophesize the future by understanding the laws of karma, but by understanding the laws of cause and effect. Let's again look at something very, very simple. This morning, after I did my practice, I drank a liter of water. I needed that water to rehydrate my body, to allow my, my organs to rehydrate and clean out the, the detoxing from the exercise, from the sweat. But another effect, I can prophesize that I'm going to have to pee probably after this is done recording. I'm going to have to go pee, right? That doesn't take a genius. I'm not a psychic because I know I'm going to have, it's just, it's just understanding cause and effect. It's understanding cause and effect, right? So make choices now that your future self will thank you for later. All right. List ye, O man, while I speak of the future. Speak of the effects that follow the cause. Know ye that man in his journey lightward is ever seeking escape from the night. I, from the blackness of night that surrounds him. Like the shadows that surround the stars in the sky. And like the stars in the sky space, he too shall shine from the shadow of night. Yeah, there's shadow work. In order to brighten that star of yours, you got to look at that darkness, present it, and heal it. Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. I, though his way lies midst shadows, ever before him goes, grows the great light. Dark through the way, but yet shall he conquer the shadows that flow around him like night. Far in the future, I see men as light born, free from the darkness that fetters the soul, living in light without the bonds of darkness to cover the light that is the light of their soul. Know ye, O man, before you attain this, that many the dark shadows shall fall on your light, striving to quench with the shadows of darkness, the light of the soul that strives to be free. So again, as I've said, there's a lot in here that really mirrors the law of one. And if you are not familiar with the law of one, I do have that, the first book, the raw material in that same um, category with books from the show on my affiliate links, you can always order the first book in the law of one, but basically in third density, right? So he's talking about, from my perspective, us moving into fourth density positive, because in third density, third density is the density of choice. And because it's the density of choice, there's polarity, there's good and right and wrong, good and evil, black and white. And so we have to make those choices. Now, again, if we choose enslavement, if we choose to hand our power away, if we choose the service to self path, that's a negative path, we go into total darkness. But if we ever are ever striving for the light, if we're, at, if we're working on ourselves, becoming better humans in society, really doing our shadow work, really taking responsibility and accountability for our, our own suffering, then we move ever towards the light. And once you move into that fourth density positive, the service to others, polarity, the darkness is then gone, right? Because at fourth density, everything splits. The darkness goes one way and the light goes the other way. Okay, great is the struggle between light and darkness, age old and yet ever new. 
yet no in time far in the future light shall be all and darkness shall fall yes fourth density positive right it's the struggle right now the friction the choice that's why when people tell you that the bad guys are not on the planet anymore that's bullshit because the law of one the third density is the planet of polarity and so there's always going to be a bad guy and a good guy a dark and a light black magic light magic in a third density world because that creates the opposing force which creates the friction that's needed for people to make choices right and so once we we transmute to fourth density positive which you will know when that happens if you read the cassiopeian board there's going to be an event a cataclysmic event that's going to transfer us into fourth density so no we are not in fourth density yet all right and i don't know when that's coming but according to the cassiopeians that's up to us list ye, o man to the words of wisdom prepare and ye shall not bind your light actually before we get into that well, let me just let me just make that clear again there's a great saying um that people say i was it was being in my head when i started to read this that i felt like i needed to say there's a really famous quote that goes the devil's greatest trick was convincing the world that he did not exist and so what's happening now is the darkness is trying to convince you it doesn't exist all these infiltrators are trying to make you believe that the bad guys are gone they're not they didn't capitulate they did not surrender service to self does not surrender does not capitulate because that would be serving others and that would depolarize them because they want to go negative negative. and so again the devil's greatest trick was convincing you that he did not exist the darkness is still here we're still in third density don't be fooled by those that wish to manipulate you to harvest you for the negative side remember light is the only creator darkness can't create anything so for those who are, of us who are light beings the darkness needs us right because they're the light eaters and so the darkness will do anything it can to manipulate you to hand over your power so that it can feed off your light and part of that is waiting for nasara part of that is waiting for med beds right you're handing over your power so you're allowing your light to be fed off of and if you're allowing that if you're choosing that actively choosing that with your free will then you're going negative with the negative beings to feed off of or you can say, no, nope, I'm going to start taking care of myself now. I'm going to be aware and have discernment and know that there are, I'm in, a, I'm in a world of polarity. And so I know that bad guys exist. I know that there is black magic. I know there's a darkness. We're in this polarity. And so I'm going to continue to use that friction to better myself. When they go low, we go high. The more they do to us, the more it gives us an opportunity to change that transmute that energy by being even better people helping our neighbors loving our neighbors not judging people working on ourselves not judging ourselves of course correcting bad decisions and, and if you've made these bad decisions if you've decided at one point that you thought nasara was coming i fell for that for a little while it's okay you can course correct the most important thing is that you course correct and yet you go you know what I'm taking my power back i don't want to be enslaved remember fourth entity positive is a social memory complex meaning that every single person every single soul is of equal value and equally important fourth density negative is a pecking order right so anybody telling you there's a new queen coming or a new king coming that's negative that's a pecking order we've already done the whole royalty thing hasn't worked out so great before and remember absolute power corrupts absolutely so it doesn't matter who you put on top of that pecking order they could be the greatest person who ever lived but once that absolute power comes in it starts to corrupt okay so we want to move more towards a social memory complex where every single person is equally important and not a pecking order all right now let's let's start this next verse lishio man to my words of wisdom prepare and ye shall not bind your light man has risen and man has fallen as ever new waves of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us towards the sun of their goal yet my children have risen from a state that was little above the beast until now of all men ye are greatest yet before thee others greater than thee yet i tell thee as before the others have fallen and also shall ye come to an end and upon the land where you dwell now barbarians shall dwell in turn rise to light forgotten shall shall be the ancient wisdom 
yet ever shall live through hidden from men. So this again goes back to that very first verse of the very first tablet, where Thoth tells you that these tablets are written for you, for the people that's come after meeting us, right? And we know we're at the end of the we're at the end of the road for third density. We should have already transferred into fourth density a while ago, but because the darkness on this planet is so freaking good at what it does, they've given us extra time for more people to make sure they go positive. If that was their soul's intention and they aren't getting duped into going negative, but eventually it's going to have to flip. I mean, I did a video a while ago because the Cassiopeian said at this point, only 3% of people are actually going positive because people have been so brainwashed. And, and, um, and I think they told us that to get us to like wake up and really start helping people understand what true sovereignty means and what's true power, personal power means. And we look to here when he talks about um, after we go, there's going to be, there's always consciousness moving up. There are people, or entities, beings below us moving up, ahead of us. Again, as we've talked about, animals are second density, where third density doesn't mean anything as far as the value of a soul. A second density soul is not any less valuable than a third density soul. It's, it's, it's like saying, is your second grader less valuable than your fourth grader? No, it's just the, the where they are in their awareness, their awareness trajectory or their awareness cycle. All right. I, in the land thou cost Kim, races shall rise and shall fall. So Kim, again, is Egypt or the Atlanteans. We're all Atlanteans. And I also want to say, go back. He said, you know, you're, you're some of the great. So this goes back again to the law of one. Like everybody on the planet right now, besides the 50% who are organic portals. And if you don't know what that is, I'll link a video in the description box below. Um, so 50% of the people of this earth that actually have souls are what they call high priority souls. So there are no new souls on the planet right now, none. Because of what, because we're about to graduate or harvest to the next timeline. So they don't put, divinity doesn't put new souls on a planet if the planet is about to ascend, okay? Because it takes like a 75,000 year cycle for a soul to go through third density. You can't leapfrog either. So, so when he's saying like, this is the best, it's your soul now is the most evolved, evolved it's going to be for you to make that choice to either go fourth density positive or fourth density negative. All right. And again, please, 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 if this is fascinating to you or a little bit confusing, I would highly, highly, highly suggest reading the law of one for yourself. Again, don't even take my word for it. I don't, I don't want to be your leader. I'm not a cult leader. I'm just a teacher and a YouTuber, right? Please, um, Get the books yourself. Um, listen to multiple people's commentary. Read the Cassiopeian board yourself. All right. Okay. So I in the land thou calls Kim shall races shall rise and races shall fall. Forgotten shalt thou be of the children of men. Yet thou shalt be moved to the star space beyond this, leaving behind this place where thou hast dwelt. So moving into fourth density. The soul of man moves ever onward, bound not by any one star because we're multiple galactic races, but ever moving to the great goal before him where he is dissolved in the light of all. Know ye that ye shall ever go onward, moved by the law of cause and effect, the law of karma, until in the end both become one. I, man, after ye have gone, others shall move in the places ye lived. Knowledge and wisdom shall be forgotten, and only a memory of God's shall survive. As I to thee am a God by my knowledge, so ye too shall be gods of the future because your knowledge far above theirs. Yet know ye that all through the ages man shall have access to the law when he will. So what he's saying here, he's not saying he's a God. He's again, he has said very much in these tablets that he's not a God, he's a teacher. But we perceive beings, we perceive beings who are of higher consciousness than us to be like gods. We see this in the Bible. We see this in multiple spiritual faiths. An alien comes to earth and we're like, oh, it must be a god. No, it's just a higher con a higher density conscious being, right? And so what's going to happen, and, and again, the law of one does talk about this. When we get to fourth density, at first, those of us in fourth, going to fourth density positive, will be in a place where no third density beings can see us or we can see them. Why? Because fourth density, until we learn how to, to, to disguise ourselves, we cannot interfere with third density because third density, what? It's the density of choice and free will. And so you cannot intervene. That's why when you want help, 
from the supernatural world or from angels, whatever you want to call it, you have to ask them to help you. They will not step in unless you ask because of consent and free will. All right. So for the law of one says when we first get to fourth density, we will be removed from any other third density beings because we have to learn how to camouflage ourselves so we don't interfere with a third density's area of making choices. And so all of the beings, the second density beings or other third density beings below us coming up behind us are going to be in the same position we're in now where they don't remember things they've lost. They don't understand. They've gone through that amnesia. And so they're going to have to experience the same cause and effects that we experience, but yet they will perceive us as being like gods because we've moved to the next stage. Okay. So, and that is where like the fourth density negative manipulates their powers because they want you to think they're gods when they're not. Ages to come shall see revival of wisdom to those who shall inher inherit thy place on this star. They shall in turn come into wisdom and learn to banish the darkness by light. Yet greatly must they strive through the ages to bring unto themselves the freedom of light. Many who are bound in darkness shall strive to hold others from the light. No commentary needed on that one. Then shall there come unto great man the great warfare that shall make earth tremble and shake in its course. I then shall the dark brothers open the warfare between the light and the night. When man again shall conquer the ocean and fly in the air on wings like birds, when he has learned to harness the lightning and shall then shall the time of warfare begin. Great shall the battle be twixt the forces. Great the warfare of darkness and light. Nation shall rise against nation. Using the dark forces to shatter the earth. Weapons of force shall wipe out the earthmen. Until half of the races of men shall be gone. Then shall come forth the sons of the morning. And give their edict to the children of men saying. O men cease from their striving against thy brother. Only thus can, can you come to the light. Cease thy from thy unbelief O my brother. And follow the path know ye are right so again i think he's referring to always the internal and the external because we know there is a cataclysm event that's coming we know again that the, the the bad guys the controllers the fourth density negative people that are trying to go fourth density negative they're not going to leave this earth we leave at the same time y'all the, the darkness and the light we leave at the same time they go one way we go the other way and so it's just going to keep getting worse there's going to be more friction more battles think about if you want to look at it this way as well, think about when a baby is being born. For the women watching who have given birth, for the men, you know what that looks like. It's painful. It's awful. And you're birth, but you're birthing something wonderful. So this last few moments were in third density, however long that's going to be. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be painful. There's going to be even more shit they're going to throw at us because it's a battle to the end. Just keep doing you. Keep working on yourself. Keep claiming your sovereignty right because at the end you will then go towards the light okay and when they say half the world half the earth will half the humans will be gone those are the organic portals they can't come with us again if you don't know what that is video in the description box below then shall man cease from their striving brother against brother and father against son then shall the ancient home of my people rise from its place neath the, neath the dark ocean waves then shall the age of, age of light be unfolded with all men sinking the light of the goal then shall the brothers of light rule the people banished shall be the darkness of night so the atlantean the rising from the oceans what we what we what we really are which is atlantean I, the children of men, shall progress onward and upward to the great goal. Children of light shall they become. Flame of the flame shall their soul ever be. Knowledge and wisdom shall be man's in the great age, for he shall approach the eternal flame, the source of all wisdom, the place of the beginning that is yet one with the end of all things. I, in a time that is yet unborn, all shall be one and one shall be all man a perfect flame of this cosmos shall move forward to a place in the stars i shall move even from out of this space time into another yet beyond the stars long have you listened to me O my children long have you listened to the wisdom of thought now i depart from ye into darkness now i go to the halls of the mente there to dwell in the future when light shall come again to men Yet know ye my spirit shall ever be with thee, guiding thy feet in the pathway of light. You've got to do this yourself, guys. He's what he's saying. He's got to back off now. You have consented to hearing his teachings. You've heard them. Now you have to integrate them 
and take that power back yourself. Thoth can't do it for you. Thoth had to do it for himself. But he's helping you figure out how to do it for yourself because you you are the storm. Legit. You are the storm. You are the white hat. You are the hero that you seek. Guard ye the secrets I leave with thee, and surely my spirit will guard thee through life. Keep thine eyes ever on the pathway to wisdom. Keep the light as thy goal evermore. Fetter not the soul in bondage of darkness. Free, let it wing its flights to the stars. Now I depart thee to dwell in a mente. Be thou my children in this life and next. The time will come when we too shall be deathless, living from age to age, a light among men. Guard ye the entrance to the halls of Amente. Guard ye the secrets I have hidden among ye. Let not the wisdom be cast to barbarians. Secret shall thou keep it for those who seek light. Now I depart. Receive thou blessing. Take thou my way and follow the light. Lend thou thy soul in the great essence. One with the great light. Let thy consciousness be. Call thou on me when thou dost need me. Use my name three times in a row. All right, and so that is Emerald Tablet 12. We are going to be moving now to Emerald Tablet 13, the keys of life and death. But before that, a really big thank you to our sponsors on this channel, ASEA. ASEA is the reason why you guys get to watch this for free. So without further ado, a brief message from ASEA. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have I've tried many, many supplements before. And you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA Redox supplement, the, the liquid, as well as the gel. But did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line? That's right, it's called the ASEA VIA. There are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering. This one is the source, which is whole food and micronutrient complex. They also have Life Max, which which supports a healthy lifestyle. They also have an omega and they have a probiotic. Now again, with this being said, I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements. Again, I've, I've been using supplements for a very, very long time because early on in my adult life, especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga Yoga, I realized again how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy and if we're giving our body the correct energy just like you give your car the correct energy the correct gas then your body your mind your well-being will work better for you now again yes there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap and I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking but one day I was on their website and I was like you know what I'm actually just gonna try it. I'm gonna order these vitamins and I'm just gonna see how I like them my boyfriend also is the same of me he himself is very skeptical of supplements he's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now and so for him he too was skeptical well the first supplement we got was the source in this supplement it has spirulina alfalfa leaf juice wheat grass juice barley grass juice oat grass juice pomegranate juice ossi berry juice raspberry juice blueberry juice cranberry juice grape juice goji berry juice sea kelp broccoli cabbage parsley kale dandelion and broccoli sprouts 
It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I, again, am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory. Basically, it's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them, but from what I have heard, so I don't take the Omega, but from what I have heard from people who do take the Omega, their biggest, biggest takeaway from a Sia's Omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day. Now, I personally am hoping that one day a Sia will make an Omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians, just like they have done with their Collagen Radiance. They've made the Collagen Radiance vegetarian friendly. So anyway, guys, just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA. If you are interested or want more information on the vitamin line or any of ASEA's products, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code. And make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country. That will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government. So just double check on that. It is available in the United States. I think it's available in most countries at this point. But again, for more information, text J, text Bryce info to 321-216. 8047. If you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them, I will put a link down in the description box that takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. Okay, a helpful mindful practice can entail just a small pause between realizing something and reacting to that something. Reminding ourselves that we have choices and that we don't need to follow into full fruition every reaction that comes up within us. We can be the witness. We can just pause, take a deep breath, a slow exhalation, and remind ourselves that generosity of spirit exudes in every direction, including towards others and including towards ourselves. So in this our month of generosity, take a deep breath, a pause, a mindful moment with no required reaction. And as you inhale, 
fill completely and totally that space. And as you slowly exhale out your mouth, feel... All right, you guys, Emerald 13, the keys of life and death. List ye, O man, hear ye the wisdom. Hear ye the word that shall fill thee with life. Hear ye the word that shall banish the darkness. Hear ye the voice that shall banish the night. Mystery and wisdom have I brought to my children. Knowledge and power descended from old. Know ye not that all shall be opened when ye shall find the oneness of all. So everything's going to come to you once you do the work to have that prativa moment, that flash of illumination, right? It's not going to come for you just sitting around picking your nose, doing nothing to, to help yourself. You have got to go up against yourself. You've got to do the work. And then all of a sudden you are going to be your DNA, your antenna, your soul will be open to understanding everything that he is saying. If you're going to be open to it, one shall you be with the masters of mystery, conquerors of death and masters of life. I ye shall learn from the flower of Amente, the blossom of life that shines in its halls in spirit. Ye shall reach the halls of Amente and bring back the wisdom that liveth in light. Know ye the gateway to power is secret. Know ye the gateway to life is through death. I through death, but not as ye know death, but a death that is in life and the fire as in light. So this goes back to all of these stories throughout history of like of someone dying and being resurrected have nothing have fuck all to do with the physical body. It's all metaphors of you being born again within yourself, of your kundalini rising. You die to your ego. You die to the false sense of self. The identity that, again, this goes all the way back to the whole crux of the Yoga Sutras. The Yoga Sutras, 5,000-year-old text written by Patanjali, who's also the father of Ayurvedic medicine. He was a scientist. He basically figured out that man suffers because man doesn't understand who he really is. To put it in modern terms, I will say, using myself as an example, I think that I am Bryce. That's who I think I am. That's my ego. That's the label. That's the expression of my soul in this life. And I've confused that expression as the actual soul. I've confused the ride, the roller coaster ride, with the person sitting in the seat taking the ride. All right. Everything in this life as me, Bryce, is just an experience, a karmic experience for my soul to refine itself. It's not who my soul is. But because I think it's who my soul is, I then suffer. And me thinking that I am Bryce is what disconnects me from God. Because God is eternal, as is the soul, but the body is not. And so once you realize that, once you go, oh my goodness, all my karma, everything I'm working through, all my attachments, that is what's disconnecting me from the light. You start to then work on those attachments and release them so that you can actually receive that peace and clarity of who you really are. And so it's not a literal death. It's a death to your mistaken identity. Okay. And this is one of the huge, it's not just yoga where this is a huge crux. It's, it's in here, it's in the Emerald Tablets, it's in the Egyptian alchemy, it's in all the old um, Western cultures, like the Druid Celtic culture. This is something our ancestors knew, but something that we've forgotten, right? And the, the bad guys did a really good job of removing the teachings of reincarnation from like the Christian faith, which Yahshua absolutely taught reincarnation. It's in the missing books of the Bible. But if you had grown up, let's, let's look at it this way. If you had grown up just knowing that you keep living, then this life you're in now wouldn't have such a hold on you, right? You would do what you needed to do to experience the lessons you need to experience in this existence without holding on to it as a permanent state of self. Yeah, it's the, it's the it's the lowercase self, not the uppercase self, right? I hope that makes sense. And so what he's talking about here is you having that moment of realization that you holding on to your identity is what's disconnecting you from God, that you are an eternal soul. All right. Desire thou to keep the deep hidden secrets? Look in thine heart where the knowledge is bound. Know that in thee the secret is hidden, the source of all life and the source of all death. Yeah, it's your choice. You can either stay bound to your own attachments and illusions and delusions, or you could choose life and realize that this body is just a temporary expression of your soul. 
List ye, O man, why I tell the secret. Reveal unto, unto thee the secret of old. Deep in the earth lies the flower, the source of the spirit that binds all in its form. For, for know ye that the earth is a living body, as thou art alive in thine own formed form. The flower of life is thine own place in spirit and streams through the earth as thine flows through thy form, giving of life to the earth and its children, renewing the spirit from form unto form. This is the spirit that is the form of thy body, shaping and molding it into its form. Right, so macro, micro. The earth has its own soul. The earth has its own chakra system. It has its own meridian points, and so do you. So the halls of Amente are both macro and micro. There are places in the earth where these halls of Amente lie, but the halls of Amente really lie within you, right? This is the flower of life is what? It's your solar plexus, your third chakra. It's where your power is. It's also where your sun is. It's why its color is yellow. Manipura is the Sanskrit name for it. Its color is yellow. It's also where we generate heat, our own sun, where all of our energy in this body circulates from. That's why it's really important to strengthen your core. See how they're connected? All right. Know ye, O man, that thy, that thy form is dual, balanced in polarity while in its form. Yeah, it's dual. You're in a mortal body with an immortal soul. Know that when fast on the death approaches, it is only because thy balance is shaken. It's only because one pole has been lost. Know that thy body, when in perfect balance, may never be touched by the fingers of death. I, even accident, may be only approached when balance is gone. So your karma. Do you guys see like the disease, the dis-ease? Thank you, thought. This is just totally reiterating everything I've been saying, everything Shanti and Morty have been saying, everything Damara has been saying, everything Catherine Edwards has been saying. You need to fix yourself. No one is, if you are allowing yourself to get sicker and sicker and sicker because you think some magical med bed is coming, then you have lost touch with reality. Your job is to work on your own diseases, your own imbalances, because when balance is off, that's when there is certain death, okay? Metaphorically and figuratively and literally, okay? You control that. You do. You control the Shakti, the experience of your soul. You. So if you're not exercising, and it doesn't have to be a marathon, you don't have to be an Olympic athlete, at least a 20 minute walk a day, at least that, get your body moving, get the what Emotions, if you look at a tarot deck, if any of you got any, any tarot card readers or aficionados in the audience right now, the, the tarot suit of the cups is emotions, right? Like the queen of cups is emotionally loving woman, yeah? So water is emotion. What is your body mostly made of? Water. That's emotion. So if you don't exercise, if you don't sweat, what happens when water just sits still? It gets gross and moldy. So not only physically are things getting stuck in your body if you're not exercising, but emotionally they are too. Emotionally they're getting heavier and heavier and grosser and grosser. This is why, my friends, all the ancient religions and spiritualities across the world incorporated exercise into their religion. I believe the church took that away to make you sick. Because we know the church is satanic, right? The Christian church is probably the biggest satanic force out there. If you're new here and that's shocking to you, buckle up. I got a whole playlist on the, the deconstruction of the Christian church. All right, doesn't mean Yahshua was a good guy who taught truth. Magdalene was a good girl who taught truth doesn't mean that they weren't good it just means that their teachings have been manipulated right and Yahshua taught in the missing books of the bible he taught yoga he taught yoga to asana to his disciples his students so when we look at exercise we're not asking you to to do it to look good it's not about looking good in a bathing suit it's not about fitting into a size zero it's getting you to literally move the water in your body get your heart rate your blood we know a lot about blood now. The bad guys love some blood. Why? Because it's your sacred DNA. The blood is the literal Shakti expression of your life force. And since the darkness can't create anything, 
it can only steal from the light, it wants to steal yours, your blood. When we look at cardiovascular, cardio heart, vascular, the, the vein system of the body that moves the blood throughout the body from the heart, brings the blood back up to the heart, cleanses it and sends it out. Your blood is your sacred DNA. It is what heals you specifically. If anybody's ever had cupping, I love cupping. Cupping's amazing. They'll go, the cupper will go and find areas of your body where there's real, where there's a stuck, there's something stuck, it's tightness. It's like a, a car wreck where you've got all these cars stuck, wrecked together. So what do they do? They take a suction cup and they suction cup the skin up to pull that stuck blood up so that new blood can come in and clean the area out, move the energy. It washes the energy. Right, so that's when you get cupped, you have like hickeys all over you, bruises, because that's the old blood that got moved. So the new blood can come in and wash it away. It's like power washing, like you power wash your driveway. It's like power washing your body. And then you're moving the sweat, you're moving the energy. That's why when people exercise, sometimes they feel like they need to cry all of a sudden. Go cry. That means you move something that needs to release itself. But if you sit and you're lazy and you don't do jack shit, guess what? No healing. And again, this is not saying that you have to. I've been doing this for 17 years. I've been sore for 17 fucking years. Okay. You don't have to exercise to the level that I do. I understand that I do a lot compared to most people my age. But this is also what I do professionally outside of YouTube. So there, I do have a higher standard because then I have to go teach it to people. Right. You don't have to do what I do. You do what you do. Do a 20 minute, just start taking a 20 minute walk, 20 minute walk. You can do anything for 20 minutes, 20 minute walk. And then just start there and see how it evolves. See how it grows. See how much more clarity, you know, I, I know a lot of um, attorneys. We have a lot of attorneys at our shala, like high conflict, divorce attorneys, malpractice attorneys. They have very stressful jobs. Most attorneys exercise a lot too. Why? They're clearing their mind. They're clearing out that energy. They're detoxing. What's the root word of exorcism? Exorcism is the removing of demons. What's the root word? Exercise. Huh. Interesting. Exercise, exorcism. Exercise because you love yourself. Exercise because you want to heal yourself. Exercise because you deserve, your body deserves to have that fluidity of motion i've told you guys before i will not go to a healer i will not go to a tarot card reader if they're not exercising this is why because it is fundamental to any healer any healer it's fun this, this is like healing spirituality 101 you gotta fucking exercise if they're not moving their energy they're not healing themselves and how the hell are they going to be a conduit for yours again this is not about you looking good in a bathing suit this is not about any type of vanity. This is about you. And, and when you're doing that 20 minute walk, if that's where you want to really feel what's happening in your body, really go into your body and feel where you're feeling that the burn, the resistance, that burn is good. That's tapas. That's heat. It's what melts away. You know, as my teacher says in India, like when you are cleaning gold, what do you do to clean gold? You boil it and you wipe the impurities away. You're boiling your body, your your skin, the sweat is detoxing impurities, not just literal impurities like, you know, to, uh, toxins, but emotional ones as well, right? So I hope that makes sense. Take care of yourself. All right. Know that the secrets of life in a mente is the secret of restoring the balance of poles. All that exists has form and is living because of the spirit of life in its poles. See ye not that the earth's heart is in balance of all things that exist and have being on its face. The source of thy spirit is drawn from earth's heart, for in thy own form thou art one with earth. When thou hast learned to hold thine own balance, then thou shalt draw on the balance of earth. Exist even shalt thou while, while earth is existing, chanting in form only when earth too shall change. Tasting not death, but one with this planet, holding thy form till a, all pass away. List ye, O man, while I give the secret, so that ye too shall taste not of change. One hour each day shall thou lie in thy head, point to the place of the positive pole, north, 
One hour each day shall thy head be pointed to the place the negatives pull south. Whilst thy head is placed in Northwood, hold thy consciousness from the chest to the head. And when thy place its head southward, hold thy thought from the chest to the feet. Hold thou in balance once in, e in each seven, seven chakras, and thy balance will retain the whole of its strength. I, if thou be old, thy body will freshen and thy strength will come back as youths. You are your own med bed. You're it. Your body is the med bed. You are the hero that you seek. This is what he's saying. He's telling you to fucking exercise. I'm looking at reading this. I'm going, yeah, these are yoga poses that he's teaching. He's telling you to exercise. Putting your head down south, that's an inversion. Don't you dare. Don't you dare use an inversion table. That's cheating. You got muscles? Learn how to use them. I have many videos. I'll place them down in the description box below of me teaching you how to do this. When you go upside down, your muscles, your, excuse me, your organs relax. They go into a relaxation and they drain. The more flexible your internal organs are, the younger you are. There's no excuse. There's literally no excuse. I have so many stories of incredible students I've had throughout the year who have every limitation on earth handed to them. And they still show up every morning and work their asses off. If you are laying in a hospital bed with a full body cast on, you know what you do? You take an hour. He's telling you an hour. That's exercising an hour each day in your mind. You think of yourself moving and exercising. You think of what it feels like to run, to stretch, watch, uh, sit there and you're a full length cast and watch workout videos. It works. All right. I, if the old body will freshen and thy strength will become that as youths, this is the secret known to the masters by which they hold off the fingers of death. Neglect not to follow the path I have shown for when thou hast passed beyond the years to a hundred to neglect it will mean the coming of death to not exercise, to not take care of your body means death is coming. And I'm actually kinder than him. I told you just take a 20 minute walk. He's saying you got to do this for an hour. Start with a 20 minute walk, build up. Hear ye my words and follow the pathway. Keep thou thy balance and live of its life. Hear ye, O man, and list of my voice. List to the wisdom that gives thee of death. When at the end of thy work appointed, thou may desire to pass from this life. You can decide when you want to leave this experience and move to the next experience. Pass the plains where the sons of the morning live and have been at being as children of light. Pass without pain and pass without sorrow into the plain where is eternal light. First lie at, at, the, at rest with thine head in the eastward. Fold thy hands at the source of thy life, solar plexus. Place thou thy consciousness in the life seat. Whirl it and divide it to north and south. The, sh the shashuna, the aponic, pranic energy. Aponic is downward south. Pranic is upward north. Send thou the one out towards the northward. Send thou the other out towards the south. Relax Thou that hold thy upon being forth from thy form, will thy silver spark fly forward and onward to the sun of the morning, blending with light at one with its sources. There it shall flame till desire shall be created, then shall return to a place and form. Know ye, O man, that thus pass the great souls, changing at will from life into life. Thus ever passes the avatar, willing its death as he wills its own life. So the avatar is your body. And so what he's talking about too here, if you look at this from the physical everyday practice, is after like if we look at the yoga practice, and I do this when I do bar as well. So after I'm done with the practice itself, I will lay on my back. And I, I usually put my palms face up, but you can place them on your solar plexus too and close my eyes for about five minutes to allow the energy. And you can actually feel the energy still moving its way through the body. Now, a lot of people mistakenly call this Shavasana. It is not, do ne never say it's Shavasana when you're in India, you'll get smacked across the face. It's all called Sukhasana or the act of no asana. Shavasana means basically rigor mortis. It's a six series posture where you restrain your breath and you let you hold it for a very long time to allow the organs to start to slow down before you bring the breath back again. You don't want to play with that. That takes many years to get to. Sukhasana is the act of no asana, the act of nothingness. And so in that act of nothingness, you're able to really observe. And so that's why even I, after I do bar, any, anything else, it's not specifically a yoga practice, I take that moment to lie on my back. I do it with my palms face up. 
close my eyes for two to five minutes and allow myself to experience the feeling, totally experience the feeling without the negotiations of the mind of what's happening with the energy inside my body. Recognize where the energy feels to be moving faster or slower, where it's if there's places in my body it can get to now that maybe it couldn't get to before I did the practice. And so it's just an observation, right? And that is, you are practicing. I mean, Richard Freeman says that perfectly. Uh, he's a very old, famous uh, yoga teacher, Ashtanga teacher. With the practice of yoga, you're, you're practicing for your own mortality, your own death, because you can let go, as he's saying here, you'll get to a point where you're not attached to this existence because you understand that you are strictly the energy behind the existence. And so you can drop this body, you can drop this life and move to the next one when you're ready for that new, new experience. Yeah? But you got to be really spiritually evolved to be able to make that happen, right? So anyway, it's um because you know that death... You're not attached to your identity anymore, right? And so you're when you're ready to move on. And I've heard that in fourth density, that's what we will be able to do. Like when we're ready, we'll just be able to move on to fifth density. And it's not that big of a deal, right? All right. The key to the placing of consciousness at the time of death so that memory may be carried from one incarnation to the other. List you, Mandrake, of my wisdom. Learn ye the secrets that is the master of time. Learn ye how those ye call masters are able to remember the lives of the past. Great is the secret, yet easy to master. Given to thee the mastery of time. When upon thee death fast approaches, fear not, but know ye are the master of death. Relax thy body. Resist not with tension. Place in thy heart the flame of the soul. Swiftly then sweep into the seat of the triangle. Hold for a moment, then move to the goal. This thy goal is the place between thine eyebrows. So this is the sixth chakra anja. It's the pineal gland. And in many, many, many cultures, they believe this is where the soul exits and enters the body. I think I've told this before, but it bears repeating. Um, even at burials, it, when someone passes away in India, for example, they pray the body through the street, um, celebrating the life of that person, and they bring it to like a pyre ground where they lay the body out. At that point, the oldest son or boy in the family will then come and smash the skull. They'll put a, um, a carpet over, smash the skull right here to make sure that everything that the soul has totally been able to release itself. And then they will burn the body. They also know that the body is completely done when the, the rest of the, the skull pops in the fire. I know that might sound grotesque, but that I think is actually an awesome way. That's how I want to be when I die. That's what I want to happen to me because I don't, I don't trust graveyards because there's something sinister. Western culture used to do this as well. In fact, I will put the Paris Catacombs video down in the description box below as well, where we talk about how we as Westerners used to do that too, before the church came in and said, no, you got to bury your dead. You got to bury your dead so they can harvest things from the dead. Long story on that. But yeah, this, basically this is super important, not just for your psychic or spiritual energy, but it's literally the gateway of the soul. It's where the soul enters and exits the body, according to many cultures. So this then goal is the place between that eyebrow, the place where the memory of life must hold sway. Hold thou thine flame here in thy brain seat until the fingers of death grasp thy soul. Then as thou pass this state of transition, Surely the memories of life shall pass too. Then shall the past be one with the present. Then shall the memory of all be retained. Freed shalt thou be from the retrogression. The things of the past shall live in today. Man, ye have heard the voice of my wisdom. Follow and ye shall live through the ages as I. All right, you guys. So that ends those two tablets. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. And if there, if you guys um, are, I know you guys, a lot of you guys have been with me for a very long time. So you've heard me talk about exercise on and off, trying to get people to change their perspective around exercise. So if there's some, if, if you're watching this and you've taken that leap and you've started to work on yourself, if there's an easy trick that you can put in the comment section to motivate people or get people to start working their body leave it down in the comment section below. Help our friends out. We, that's, we're all just walking each other home. So, so Lee, you know, maybe, maybe you found that if you do your, your walk at a certain time, it's easier or with, you know, a certain meditative music, it's easier, whatever that is for you, leave that down in the comment section below. So people watching who are now motivated to start working the waters of their body and the blood of their body, getting it moving will be motivated and have different ideas of how to start and actually start doing it. So anyway, you guys don't forget us to, to join us over on Aquarius rising Africa at 10 o'clock Eastern standard time today and every Monday where we discuss this live. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon.
Hello you guys, editing Bryce here. As I was going through this footage, I decided that I was going to do another giveaway. If you've been around for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of Marnie Alton, who is a bar teacher. And if you take her classes and you're educated in spirituality, you definitely can see how like, how much extensive work she's done and how she too incorporates spiritual principles into working the body. I also really like her platform, which is called Embody, because she has all different levels, all different times, so 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. And even if you're someone who's new to exercise and you opt to do the hour class, she gives you different variations of each movement so you can adjust it to your fitness level and so what I'm gonna do if you um, I, I think I'm gonna give I'm gonna do a giveaway so if you've made it this far and you would like to be put into a raffle to win a month of Marnie Alton's website which is in body a month gift card to be able to use her website to, to practice with her exercise with her then down in the comment section below just write the name Marnie and I will put you into a raffle which I will announce Monday of next week which I believe let me just quickly Monday of next week is August 14th 2023 August 14th 2023 I will announce the winner of the raffle so yeah if you're interested write Marnie in the comment section below all right you guys I'll talk to you soon